IS-350. I want to go fast, but oh, don't look at me. Lexus IS-350. Fancy car for you and me. Is it really luxury? I guess we'll wait and see. 2007 Lexus IS350. This is the car you get when it's time to grow up. You have a nice little corner office, and the dealership just gave you a decent deal on financing. Oh, but you were hit with the ladies up to 2001. Just spilling liquor, slinging dick, and throwing loads in women all throughout the 90s. No fucks given, and no rubbers worn. Unclaimed children across the eastern seaboard, and a Christmas bonus that'll go toward the venue for the wedding in May. Lexus IS350, the official car of your late 20s. The Lexus IS350 offers a 3.5 liter V6, and it gets 306 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. It was initially crafted in opposition to the Lexus ES350, which was more of a comfort-oriented model. The IS was designed as the performance alternative with a six-speed automatic transmission that included paddle shifters to try and placate all the people who wanted a manual option. Zero to 60 takes 5.6 seconds, which is pretty fast for a car positioned in the luxury market. This isn't built off some utilitarian potluck TGIA Table Wine, Lebanon, Bologna, Toyota Corolla, or Camry platform. The IS350 is a front engine, longitudinal, 3.5 liter, double cam, variable valve, rev hormy, rear wheel drive only sports sedan. Add this to a list of cars you can call on when someone asks, I want a fun car, but my parents don't blah, 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 blah. Lexus IS350, it would be a destroyer if it had a six-speed manual, but it doesn't, so meh. I'd recommend a Honda Accord 6MT V6 over the IS350, but the IS350 is still fast and fun with an auto box. Yvonne, the owner, while we were filming, asked me, you want me to do a burnout or drift it? And I asked, Will it do it? And he goes, oh yeah, easy. We didn't do it, but when I drove the IS350, kapang, that tack needle shot up like your automated body functions during a horn dream. And it's not surprising that Lexus goes all in on appealing to the performance sector. They've got a reputation to protect, sure, but today they still have a reputation to build. At least within the wider car community, where a Lexus is easily dismissed as a car for your school superintendent going bald because another tenure biology teacher got caught finger banging a senior. The IS350 has double wishbone front suspension, an independent multi-link rear suspension, and a durable performance grade chassis. It's also got a decent interior for the front passengers. More on this in a second. The Lexus offers leather seats, dual zone climate control, some sort of audio system that calls itself premium, a six disc CD changer, an auxiliary jack, three position driver passenger seat memory, adaptive front lighting, and rain sensing wipers, among other luxury components, but the trade-off is that you don't exactly get a whole lot of room. In particular, the seating in the back isn't generous. You'd expect with four seats, you'd it'd be... <laughs> four seats. You'd expect with four doors, it'd be easy to get in the back. Oh, nope. I mean, what are you going to do? It has a smaller wheelbase than comparable luxury sedans of its time. And it rides hard. Even on its softest suspension, it feels like a WRX on cheap coilovers. The big wheels and the thin tires aren't helping either. Either. Maybe it's not that bad, but when I see four doors and a Lexus badge, my mind expects an experience as soothing and familiar as watching the Price is Right wheel go around. I'm not expecting an experience that goes, oh no, oh no, oh yes, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, this is happening. Remember that Horm dream from before? It was so real, I was asking permission in the dream. May I take my pants off too? I fucking said that shit in my dream. Normally being awkward and uncomfortable wouldn't be much of a deal breaker, but when you're pushing yourself as a luxury brand, you kind of expect something nicer than this. Then again, it was 2007. Standards were different 10 years ago. At least that's what we tell ourselves in 2017 when we look back on some of the people we bung in college. But hey, it's part of the educational experience of figuring out where your line is on alcohol tolerance. Because when the Goldschlager comes out, so do my kinks. More engine specifications. This is the 2GR FSE. It's a complicated naturally aspirated V6 in that it has both port injection and DGI. 
direct gasoline injection. What Toyota was trying to do was get direct injection to have a lean burn when just cruising around and commuting and a fatter burn when under load and up in the high rev range. You know, it may also have something to do with Toyota finding a way to safely offer an 11.8 to 1 compression engine to a middle class dumbass market segment who will go, Der her, gas is gas, and goes 87. Uh-oh, what's that sound? So maybe the port injectors would shut off completely and the DJI would lean out in addition to the ECU pulling timing if you put 87 into this? I don't know. Most people who drive a Lexus don't really care about performance. It's about what driving a Lexus means. And look, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Everybody looks for something different in their cars, but Lexus targets their vehicles toward people who can buy them new rather than presenting their cars as aspirational vehicles that you're going to want to buy used. I don't really think about the person who views a Lexus as a dream car. And why would they? A Lexus probably isn't seeing that money from those people for a few years. Business is mostly about getting the money sooner rather than later. And you could argue people who love Lexus cars the most are the ones who've romanticized them as the pinnacle of automotive luxury. See also track two of 36 chambers. Maybe a Lexus won't cause gasping breaths at a car show, with the exception of super dreams, but cars, even luxury models, can't just be about trying to impress other people. Because the IS350 mm, doesn't impress anyone. Just, it, it looks like nothing. It looks like everything else. Ooh, it has a Lexus badge. But the point of the IS350 is to be a performance sedan. A car that's fun to drive. A car that you don't care how it looks. A mid-2000s sleeper. But then, really, why does it need the Lexus badge? Because then the car stops being a complex, beautiful thing that you want to look at once you know what it is and once you know what this can do. It becomes something that you want to maintain. And without the performance, the IS350 would just be a purse on wheels. An expensive bag for dogs. And a place to put money in contraception. And while we may not not always get things right with the cars we review, we like to think that we number among a community of people who view cars as more than accessories. IS350, a quite nice car apparently, that this the Robin Leach of pseudo luxury cars, it observes wealth from a comfortable distance, even while being nice on its own. Still, it's not something I'd ever spend cash on. But who cares, cause I can't afford this car. Here we go. Reveal to me your secrets. Oh boy, okay. There's no, uh, there's no TP. So... I have a Summit Racing magazine.